welcome to the Yarn Waffle podcast. Uh, my name is Liz Ward. I am a crochet designer living in York in the UK with my cat Cal and soon to be new kitten. More on that later. Lots of lovely footage. I got to meet her again on Monday. It was so cute. She's so tiny. Oh, she's amazing. Um, yes, this is the Yarn Waffle podcast. It is episode 13. If you have been here before, welcome back. It's lovely to see you again. Uh, if you are new, welcome, welcome. Uh, we've had quite a few new subscribers since the last episode, so thanks for sharing everyone. And yeah, please do like, comment and subscribe. It really helps this channel and builds it up. And that helps me and we all have a lot of nitty fun together. So that's good. Um, okay, so yeah, it is, um, oh gosh, I don't even know the date. It's getting towards the end of January. It's a Wednesday. It'll be the day this goes up on YouTube. It might be quite late that day, but it'll be that day. I should have figured out what day it was. I, I actually wrote show notes this time. I never write show notes and I didn't put the date on, but it does say the date. I'm supposed to tell you what date it is and yet I didn't write that down. Doing well, Liz. Doing really well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely bright winter's day outside. I am in my studio um, as I probably have already mentioned I am a full-time crochet designer who has done no crochet for almost a year. More on that. Um, yeah, my crochet mojo has been away with the fairies and it is slowly creeping back and work is starting to, um, to happen again. But yeah. So yeah, it is lovely and bright in my studio this morning. So Cal is currently in the spare room. Um, I'm assuming as soon as she realises I'm talking to myself, she's going to be coming in and wondering what's going on. So we'll see her in a bit. But um, yeah, so first off, I'm going to talk about what I am wearing, which I don't have a knitted jumper on today just because I was too lazy to change. <laughs> and, but yeah, I do have on my raven shawl. And this is a pattern that will be coming out soon. Um, I think most of my testers are nearly finished with it. And there have been a few tweaks that I need to make to the pattern and get that out and get that just tried and then it will be coming out. It is a um, rectangular shawl, lots of garter, lots of eyelets and in two colours with some striping to really sort of show off the colours and this one is the second one I've knit and it's all in black elephant yarn and it is in the mud bound and the Daryl colourway and this is in a single ply. So yeah that pattern will be coming out soon and right on cue is <laughs> Carol. Hi, Boo! Okay, we'll just ignore her and crack on. So yeah, that is what I'm wearing. Um, I, I have made two of these. I really want to make another just to um, check those final tweaks in the pattern before I release it. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I love it. It's my pattern and I love it. Are you okay, Carl? She's happy. There's a basket. There's a cushion. She's gonna be. She's gonna be a happy cat. Hey. So we made you a cushion. Okay, finished object. And shock horror, I have not finished a pair of socks this week. <laughs> that is mainly because I've been doing more crochet than normal. But yeah, I have finished a sweater. And I have finished uh, my easy one by Hokey Locatelli. And this is knit out in dropped yarn. It's knit in uh, Nord, which is a four ply. I think it's got a little bit of alpaca in. I might be completely wrong on that. And the Kid Silk Haze? No, that's the Rowan one. The Kid Silk Mohair that drops do. Um, it is just black as black can be, but it is incredibly floofy. This will probably blow out the camera massively, so I'm just going to do a little close up. Yep, I've gone pale as anything. And this has gone all grey and yucky. But it has exposed seams that you can see there. It's got a rolled neckline and it's nice and long. I would be wearing this, but it is still damp. I finished this about three days ago and blocked it and left it to dry because it's so cold in the UK at the moment. It just hasn't dried yet. I did actually put it on the radiator to see if I could get it to dry a little bit and ended up with a load of dust because I don't dust behind radiators because who does? Uh, yeah, but I am really, really happy with it. It is just a black boxy jumper and it is playing havoc with the camera. So I probably won't be wearing it much, much on the post, much on the podcast. Cal is doing what we expect her to do and she is rocking that camera. Uh, come here, boo. That's all right, don't it? Meow. 
Kiss. No, Cal doesn't give kisses. Cassie used to, but Cal doesn't. Do you? She might look at you blankly if you sort of. But yeah, so I have finished my easy one and I love it. There's still a few more ends to um, sew in. And I made this as um, part of the uh, Wool and Vines practical that's going on at the moment. Whether I'll actually enter it or not. I tend to cast things on because there's a cal going and I get a really good idea and then just forget to post them to Ravelry or um, upload them into the forums because I'm terrible, terrible human being. But yeah, I, I know I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this jumper. Uh, I found it really easy to knit. It's been on the needles for about three months, but that's because it got put down for a while. Um, most of it was knit fairly quickly. Okay, Cal settled down, but a mess has been made and there may be an awful cut in that bit, so I do apologise. Um, yeah, I was just finishing talking about the easy one. It's a really lovely pattern. It's knit top down. It's fingering weight. I have hold, held um, fingering weight together with mohair. I didn't change the recommended needle size on that, so I've got a tighter fabric, but that just makes it really nice, warm and snuggly. Uh, yeah, it's a top down construction. Um, you knit front and back and then join in the round to knit the body. I'm really happy with the length of the body. It could have been longer, but yeah, there's only so much 300 odd stitches in the round in black yarn that you really want to knit. Um, I know this is going to get us so much wear and that's the reason that I wanted to actually make it and to see if I could. And yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's finished and I will be wearing it as soon as it's properly dry. And that is the only finished object this week. Um, and that is because I'm recording... Oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm recording um, on what would be my normal week. Last week I was a week behind, but it's still only a week apart. So yeah, I think one finished object is okay for just a week. Forgive me if you if you expect more from me. I apologise. Um, so I'll move on to whips and we'll start with socks. Meow. Yeah, she's back. So I do have another finished uh, work in progress, and it is a sock. And I will just pop it on a sock blank while Cal distracts you nicely. Um, and this is one of the um, whips that I had at the start of the year that I wanted to finish. So this is the first sock it's finished. And it is the opal yarn and it is the... Ooh, hang on, let me get that a bit closer. So yeah, it is the opal yarn and all the details are on there. I don't know if this is still available. I have had this in stash for a couple of years. But I am trying to work through some of my um, commercial sock yarn. Uh, which will hopefully lead to um, the commercial sock yarn reviews that I'm going to be doing soon, which is uh, hopefully the first one coming out next week. Stay tuned. Oh. Um, but yeah, so again, this is my standard vanilla sock recipe that I do. It's a two by two cuff, which I work about an inch, inch and a half of, depending on how lazy I'm feeling. And then I do a short row heel. I really like the way this heel has come out. I haven't done contrast, it's just in the yarn, but it's sort of giving you that sort of two-tone effect, which I think is really nice. Then I just knit down the foot, and on this one I have done my rounded toe rather than a wedge toe. And yeah, there's a little bit of pooling on some of these bits here, but you can expect that with commercial sort of cell striping yarn. It's kind of rainbow, it's kind of fun, and I like it. Makes me happy. Uh, so the second one is cast on. But literally, I've only done three rows of rib, but it's on the needles. And I have, I'm making a point of um, finishing off all my um, single socks that I have been working on. There was a few in my whip episode, which it was a couple of episodes away now, at the start of the year, uh, because uh, Dr. Sockstagram is doing a second sock cow. So, as I said before, Brilliant inspiration for me to actually get on and finish my socks. Whether I'll actually end up posting and entering is another question. <laughs> but yeah. So that sock is on the needles. That second sock is on the needles and I finished one. I also cast on a new sock um, and this is a self-striping sock. Self-striping? Uh, words aren't coming out properly today. 
So this yarn is by Giddy Yarns and it was her December Film Club yarn and it's the Schindler's List, oh words, Schindler's List colourway which um, I think if you've seen the film kind of makes sense. Um, I think it looks sort of like the Russian propaganda colour posters and stuff but I suppose that fits in a way as well. And what I have done with this one is I have done a provisional cast on and I am knitting the whole ball of yarn because you get a 50 gram ball as a tube and then I'm going to go in and put heels, toes, cuffs in in the contrast colour. You did get a contrast colour with this, I'm probably not going to use that, um, well I'm definitely not because I've been using it in my mitered square blanket because it was such a lovely grey and I couldn't resist putting it in there. I'm probably going to put in the, the black that I have, that I've used in loads of things by Dye Candy, the Reaper colourway that I had for my um, Starflake shawl. So I'll probably just use that as a contrast because it's, it's a really nice black and I think it'll go really well with this one. And for long time viewers who may think I probably will end up knitting a tube and never getting around to put heels, toes and socks in, I my other tube, which has been hanging around for god knows how long, um, finally found the contrast colour and was going to show it to you today but I've made an absolute hash of taking out that heel and putting it back in again and it is cu currently a tangle of cables and yes, I don't think I brought it up to show you, no yeah. I didn't, the shame is too much. So yeah, another sock is on the needles and um, that's just a great project for on the go knitting. I have this in my handbag all the time just because I don't need to think about anything and it's it's really, it's nice little small ball, nice compact travel project, goes with me wherever I go. Um, right, sorry I'm in a bit of a mess because I had to sort of shuffle everything around but I think we're okay. There's not actually that much to talk about this week, so we should be okay. So, one of the long term whips that I wanted to talk about, sorry I'm looking down because I'm trying to unravel this without losing anything. Um, this year I am doing a mitered square blanket and it's a square a day blanket. Um, currently I'm doing more than one square a day, I'm pretty much just doing a square as and when I feel like it. Some days I only do the one square and some days I do more but I haven't missed a day yet. I'm aware that I probably will at some point during the year, I may get sick of this project um, so that's why I think getting ahead now while I'm really really on board with this project is, is a good idea to do. And yeah, so it is a mitered square blanket. I'll just hold it up and then you can have a look. It is so pretty. It is getting big already. It is about a metre square. So these ten, it's ten squares across on the bottom and I will be doing ten squares and making that into um, a quarter and that is, yeah, that is a quarter of what will be the finished blanket. So this is half the size across it will be when it's finished and yeah I, it's, it's just such a fun project at the moment it's got some beautiful yarns in this is by um dye candy no this is dye candy this is gamer crafting this is truly hooked it was a sock blank um this is also gamer crafting this dye candy again dye candy this one this beautiful purple speckle here, my friend Kaylee gave me this one when she came over with her dog George to visit last week and it is absolutely stunning. And she used to dye as um, the York Makery, I think she's String Theory Dye Works now. Uh, she's not currently dyeing and selling but come on we need to shout at her, shout at her to get dyeing because that is stunning. Um, this one is another one by Dye, uh, dye Candy, I think this is Girls Like Dinos too. <laughs> but this is Cal's favourite thing. She loves this blanket, she thinks it's hers. So if I just leave it here, she'll probably sit on my knee in the blanket because it's her favourite thing, isn't it? She doesn't like it when I stop working on this on a morning because it's her. She just likes to be underneath it, which is exactly what she's done. As soon as I put this blanket on my knee, she's come on, she knows it's time to sit on my knee. 
But yeah, the other thing that I'm doing, which is probably quite clear, is I'm alternating um, hand-dyed coloured yarn with greys, just to make the colours pop more and to give it an even overall finish. And I, I really love it. I, I think the grey is making it. I'm not. There is no rhyme or reason to what grey I'm putting where or what colour I'm putting where, other than that it's a grey alternated, alternated by colour. Although some colours are sort of migrating together, just because. I want to play with that colour next. And there isn't as much green in it as I would have thought, as that's one of my favourite colours, but I think I must be restricting myself slightly with what greens I'm putting in. So I'm not going to put this away. Cal's really nice and calm on my knee. I'm just literally going to cover her over. I don't know if I can angle the camera down without wobbling you massively. Cal! Yeah, happy cat. Right, okay, we seem to be back to normal. Cal is here, um, but she's, she's happy under a blanket and I'm just gonna leave her there. Actually, what I might try and do, and see if she'll do it, is put that there and see if she'll go into there. No, nope, she just wants to be on knee. Yes, yeah, so I think that's pretty much all the knitting I've got to show for you today. So we're just gonna talk about some crochet. Um, I have been doing some crochet, I'm trying to get the mojo back as far as crochet is concerned. It's the start of the year, I have a lot of pattern ideas and um, also I want to do what I usually do at the start of the year which is a refresh of some old patterns and whatnot. So what I've decided to do is to dedicate one of my normal um, work from home days as to just doing crochet. I'm not allowed, to, other than my mitered square blanket, I am not allowed to pick up any knitting pro uh, projects and procrastinate that day even if I don't want to particularly be um, working um, the projects the hobby projects that I'm going to work on will be crochet projects so that is the plan and the first day of that was Friday this week which was actually our staff at Dutton's um, our little Christmas do which we always have after Christmas because we do a crafting secret Santa where we make each other things and the underwing mitts the moth mitts that I showed on last week's episode um, were my gift for my person that I got um, and also so that's that Friday morning I wanted to make a little bag for them to go in which I did that was really cute um, and I also wanted to do some little maybe some little beading but that didn't happen um, so actually even though it was supposed to be crochet day I was already procrastinating and doing other crafts and not crocheting um, and the only crochet I had on hand that was easy to pick up uh, was actually my crochet granny granny square blanket and this was downstairs because I had actually been ripping it out because I'd put a lot of minis that I loved into it and I wanted that yarn to be in my mitered square blanket so I'd actually been ripping this out and taking some of those minis out but the squares in the mitered square blanket take less than five grams so what was what I was then doing was winding what was left into a magic knot ball and um, if you don't know how to make a, ma a magic knot ball I suggest you have a look on YouTube because there's amazing tutorials and it's a really good way of just winding together odds and ends of fabric sorry if the camera wobbles Kel's there again um, One moment while I try and settle. Yes, there are needles in this, by the way. I'm not precious about things. Not when it comes to cats, they'll ruin everything eventually, so I might as well let them. Let's see if she'll settle there for a minute. Yeah, so I had a, um, a magic knot ball that I had made. This is actually the second one because I've um, worked through the first one and I just started putting it back into uh, my granny square blanket and this was started probably over a year ago now um, and where I had ripped back to was this yellow section here so this is where I've started from when I was working so I've done a fair amount these rows are long because you're working um, if a lot of people out there are doing granny stripe blankets and they for you're going back and forth so you're only working on one side back and forth with a square you are going all the way around so at this point the rows 
a long but not that long I think it probably takes me about half an hour to do a full round um yeah she's settling um but it's gonna get it's gonna get a lot bigger and every it, it will take a lot longer to do every round and obviously it'll take more yarn so I am not fussed where the yarn stops and starts and ends and all things like that it, it, it can it can do what it's like it likes and that's why a magic knot ball is such a good idea because it will do you can just carry on crocheting with it I'm also just crocheting over the ends as and when I come to them but yeah I think that uh no, I was showing you the right way. So yeah, it's really pretty, really bright. And it's just been a fun project to work on. And so I'm going to keep going with that. And see how far we get. But try not to, go, I'll try not to concentrate on it too much because that's hobby crochet and I need to be doing some work. So as far as work crochet is concerned, um, as, as I've said before, it happens at the start of every year. I have 101 ideas um, and like my brain just goes into scattergun mode and I can't actually settle on what I want to do. So I have actually decided what I'm going to be doing. Um, it is, I'm going to be re-releasing four um, cowl scarf shawl patterns that I released a couple of years ago. They never did particularly well because the photography wasn't very good and I wasn't particularly happy with the yarns I made them with. But the patterns were great. The, the stitch is just beautiful. Um, yeah, so I'm remaking all four of those. I'm on, I've only just started the first one. Um, and I'm gonna be remaking them in this yarn by Serdar that I found at my local boys department shop, which has a haberdashery. I can't remember the name for this. I will try and find it and put it on screen. I did look on Wool Warehouse this morning to try and find the name for this and couldn't find it because I also need to get another two balls because I only currently have two. And I wanna make all four um, scarf shawl shawls in the same color, not the same color, in the same type of yarn in different colors. But just look at this, this is 100% acrylic, um, it's a 200 gram ball, it, I think it cost about 9 quid. Um, but it looks kind of really like homespunny and beautiful, and it, it's got a really long repeat on it. Um, so yeah, so this is the yarn that I'm going to be using for all four designs. Um, it, they will be coming out fairly shortly. Um, I am a quick crochet, so um, I'd like to say I'd at least get two of them finished by the next podcast and probably have them all out in a month. But yeah. We'll see how it goes. So if I can show you this fabric. This is the first one. This is called the honeycomb cowl. Um, and it's very open and lacy, but what you do is you knit, you knit, you crochet it really long and then you loop it and loop it so you get this dense texture, which is really light and drapey, which I think is something we don't not get very often with crochet. Um, it's a very simple stitch, but very dramatic um, and if you have been making granny stripe blankets, you can do this. It's not too different. You're just putting stitches in slightly different places. But yeah, I mean, I'm just going to sort of scrunch this up so you can see it. And you can see the effect that it will give. So it will be holy and, and lovely. And these colours are just fab. So yeah, so that is currently what I'm working on with crochet. I have a few more ideas. Of course I do. Too many ideas and not enough time. That's what I have. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to merrily work away on this while I'm um, editing this in a few minutes. But I do have one final thing to show you, and um, there are no acquisitions this week of Yarny Goodness. Um, the postman may bring some later, but they will be on um, next week's podcast. Oh, if you did see last week's episode, I showed some yarn that was going to the shop heavily discounted. Uh, there is still some left, and there are also still some of the Cassie bags left. Hang on. Whoop. So yeah, thanks for everybody who did shop the update. That was really great. Um, there is still some left. It is really, really good um, bargain prices at the Mo. Uh, there's a bit of DK, semi-solids. Go take a look. The details will be on screen. Um, uh, but yeah, the Cassie bags... The Cassie bags were um, my way of um, making something for you guys who have supported this channel from the beginning and, you know, 
Yeah. Y it, you know if you know. And I'm not going to get all emotional about it again. But yeah, we lost lovely Cassie. So I made these really cute bags. This is the um, cactus one. Um, I know long-term supporters of this podcast have pretty much all purchased one. Um, and there are a few left. I think there's one left of every single design. I might put a picture up on screen so you can see that. And there's loads of yarn left in there. Um, so if you want one, you have a little bit longer left to get one and then they are going to be taken down and it will be a long time before I have project bags in the shop again. But yeah, so there are options there. If you want one to support the podcast, if you want to support the podcast in other ways, there's a Kofi account that all the details will either be on the screen at the end of the podcast or blah blah blah. Uh, but yes, thank you to everybody who has. Um, it's wonderful and it's, yeah, I can't wait till we get this piece of artwork that, you know, it's the memorial piece for Cassie and of course the new kitten which is coming soon. Um, I'm wondering whether I should talk about kitten now. Probably because she is actually sleeping on the last thing I have to show you, which is my only other acquisition, which is my gift from my secret Santa. Um, so while she is happily in her basket, I will talk to you about Kitten. And um, I will put the footage that I took when I went to the breeder on Monday after this little segment, and then we'll come back and do disturb Cal and talk about what's there. Um, but yes, Kitten was born on Christmas Day. Uh, she is from a Bengal breeder in York. Um, the breeder is lovely. C could not love her cats more. Absolutely lovely. Um, she doesn't mind me going around whenever, whenever I want. So I'm able to take kitten smells back and forth to Cal. And um, that is one of the main reasons I haven't gone for an older cat or rescued a cat. is because Cal will not accept an older cat. She's very territorial, especially over her food. Um, so introducing a smaller cat because she, she, she has actually had kittens um, so she is very mothering towards smaller cats and so hopefully bringing in a kitten it's still a risk there is still a risk involved um, but yeah bringing in a kitten that she will learn the smell of because that smell will be on me and will be uh, there's a, like a special cloth that we take between them so they can smell uh, but yeah she's four weeks old she is a silver bengal, so Cal is ginger, or just, just a brown bengal really, uh, but um, he's very gingery in colour. And bengals range in colours. But yeah, the, my little kitten is a, is a silver bengal, so she, she literally looks like the surface of the moon. She's stunning. Oh, excuse me. Um, she's four weeks old at the moment. She was born on Christmas Day. I will get her on the 2nd of March when she's nine weeks old. Um, it's more usual for you to get pedigree cats at 12 weeks, but because of the closeness I will have, I, I, well, I already do have with the breeder and the amount of time that I'll be spending with her, um, she'll be coming to me at nine weeks and then going back for her second set of injections at 12 weeks, or I'll be sorting those out at my vets, whichever. Um, but yeah, so I, I will have already built up a bond with the kitten by that time and so she'll be weaned, the mum will be ready for them to go. I love it with cat parents where they're just like, nope, get get them gone now. Um, so yeah, she will be ready to go. She is, um, she, she's, I think she's one of five in the litter. She's got two brothers and two sisters. Uh, she has a brother that looks very much like her that you might see in the footage that I'm going to put out. Um, she's all, all the, um, all the kittens are very sociable with each other apart from one, the little tiny dot one who's, um, she's the smallest of the litter but she wasn't the last born, she's just smaller because um, that's how cats grow. Um, and uh, yeah, when I went to see them it was, it was very difficult because even though I'd already picked out mine and I picked out mine for the right reasons for the personality because the most important thing really is not that the cat almost gets on with me, it's that she, they get on with Cal. Um, that is a relationship that needs to be healthy, not how I feel about the cat. But yeah, the, this little tiny, because they are tiny at the moment, they are so tiny, this little tiny dot, um, 
she just was sort of sitting apart from all her sort of litter mates and as soon as I sat down next to her she just burrowed, burrowed into my coat and the whole time I was there, you'll probably see on the footage, she's just staring at me with these big eyes and I'm just like, don't, don't, you're breaking my heart because I would automatically be drawn to a kitten like that that is drawn to humans um, but that's the wrong decision to make in this case because that would be a bad decision for Cal so happy with the kitten we've picked uh, she does have a name, I've picked it out, it suits her perfectly I will tell you that when we meet her in person I will also probably be doing a lot more vlogs and podcasts that month just because she won't be tiny forever and so we might as well enjoy her while she's really cute so yeah, I'll shut up, she's adorable, here's the footage, blinky plonky music over the top and I'll be back in a minute
What do you think? Ah, oh, she's amazing. She's so amazing. Oh, it's exciting now. I mean, I've met. This is the second time I've met her, but the first time I met her, she was kind of like a furry slug and not very kitten-like. And now her personality's coming out, and yeah, I, it's starting to be a real thing that she's coming home. And she's so tiny, and there's so many places in this house where I could lose her. So as long as Cal doesn't eat her and I don't lose her, it'll all be fine. But yeah, now last thing to show you, and then I'll leave you in peace to get on with your knitting um, or crochet. Judge not. Um, I'm gonna have to disturb the sleeping demon. I don't know if there's a good way of doing this. She's gonna get angry either way. Right. Sorry, boo. Right, go there for a minute. You can have the blanket. Here you go. Yeah. And I'll even put this back. I tell you what, if I put my easy one in there for you. There you go. There you go. Might not happen. Okay. Yes. So this was uh, my secret Santa gift that was made for me. And sorry about the wobbling, but she's out of the basket, so we we have to go with this. Um, and this was made by our Saturday girl, who is Catherine, and she is absolutely adorable. I love her to pieces. I have so much fun working with her. Um, and I work every Saturday all day, so um, yeah, it's really good fun. And yeah, she, she said the only thing that she can make is a cushion. So whoever got her in Secret Santa was getting a cushion. Um, and that I was lucky enough that that was me, but this is the most awesome cushion in the world. So this is crazy. I mean, I am showing you the back here because the front is just amazing. So she knows I do this podcast um, and she is a teenager and she is fully within her rights to ridicule me for being a YouTuber in my 40s. Um, but she doesn't. She thinks it's cool. And the camera's getting wobbled again. Sorry. You have a cat right up your lens. Cow, come on. I will cut this bit out because she is wobbling it madly. Okay, we're gonna be quick because Cal's just gonna run around and, and cause havoc because I have disturbed her from her piece. And yeah, you're not ready for this, but it's amazing. Cause she has made me and this podcast a play button cushion. So this is a YouTube play button uh, cushion and I think you get a silver play button if you reach 10,000 subscribers and a gold one if you get a million. It's unlikely we're ever going to get that far, but we don't care. We have our own little play button. So yeah, I absolutely promised her that this will be on the set, on, well, in my studio um, for the podcast and I think Cal's already decided that she likes to sit on it. So, yep. It has buttons because obviously Dutton's is a button shop and it says the yarn waffle on there and it's play button. It's so cute. I was so overwhelmed when she showed it to me. I was just so happy. But I'm going to just pop it back in here in the hope that I can calm Carl down while I, I go on and edit it this. So pop that back in there for now. Are you coming back, boo? It's been a very wobbly camera episode. Um, apologies for that. I would like to say we'll get more professional, but we're inviting more chaos in, aren't we? Come on. Okay. She's not going to settle. I knew this was going to happen when I got the the cushion out. Don't rock the camera! We have a minute's peace. Let's round this up and say goodbye. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll be back in two weeks um, and there will be more kitten footage that, uh, on the next episode because I'll have been to see her again um, and I will we'll hopefully have another finished sweater and We'll finish socks. Who 
who knows but yeah thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe all down below and any links to anything i've talked about will be in the description box below and all ev everything i've forgotten to say will be on the screen because it's been a bit of a crazy one um, and i'll see you on the next one thanks for watching bye